All right, here we go with part three of how to edit your home videos using EDIUS 7, or in this case, also EDIUS Neo 3.5. At least I believe most everything that we're showing you here is possible in Neo. I've never really worked with Neo, but I've taken a look at the specs and what's possible in Neo and what isn't. And I believe everything we're showing you, or at least most everything, is also available in Neo. Now, as I thought about our last uh, presentation, I realized there was probably one more thing I should have pointed out. When I was talking about using the insert key on your keyboard to toggle back and forth between being in the insert mode and the overwrite mode of editing, I, I should have maybe mentioned that there's a good way to tell visually just what mode you are in and that is in addition to the little button here over here that changes as you uh, toggle back and forth pressing down on your insert um, button when you see the blue you know that you're in the insert mode when you see the amber you're in the overwrite mode but also down here in the very bottom corner you'll notice that there's a text-based information about that you're given a display there of of what mode you're in. So if at any time you are wondering, what mode am I in? Well, you can just look down to the bottom of your screen there and know uh, what mode you are in. Okay, as you've probably guessed, I've gone ahead and uh, finished up the edit here, but I wanted to show you a few things about how to enhance your video and uh, work with your audio a little bit. And then perhaps in our last tutorial on this series, we will take a look at about how to export your uh, finished video so that you can upload it to the internet or otherwise share it to friends. Okay, but uh, let's take a look at uh, adding some effects to our video. And I think for this process, this part of the video where you're you're kind of polishing it up, you're 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 finishing it, you're adding some some special effects. What I would recommend doing is uh, add a, a fourth window here. We've been working with three windows, you know, our timeline window, our preview window, and then our bin window or what would might be better to call it in this case a palette window that contains our bin as well as our effects sequence markers source browser and information palette and it's in this stage of the edit that it would be a good idea i believe to make a fourth window and to make room for that palette we're going to make our timeline window just a little smaller but before you try and do that, uh, you need to break it away from the other two so that it's not connected. And then you will be able to uh, make shrink that down, make it smaller, independent of moving the other windows. Then you can bring it back up into place. And now let's break our information palette away from the other palettes in that palette window. And you can do this with any one of these tabs. You know, if you wanted to break the source browser away into its own window, if you wanted to break the effects palette into its own window, you know, you can do that as well. Sometimes, though, when you're working with just one monitor attached to your computer, it's, it's just easier to have all of these together in one palette. But for doing this portion of the video, I like to have the information palette uh, separate so that we can... Uh, work with it a little bit easier. When we're adding effects and uh, filters and that type of thing, it's easier to be able to have this little uh, information palette open and more readily available. Okay, so go over and click to your effect palette. And if you'd like to rearrange that and bring it right over next to your bin, you can just grab a hold of that and slide it across. So now that it's right next to the bin. So you're moving from your bin uh, very easily over to your effects. And uh, let's see, what do we want to show you first? Maybe um, a nice, uh, fun, soft focus. Uh, baby's just home from the hospital. And, you know, spending most of his day kind of sleeping. <laughs> so it might be nice, um, you know, especially if the baby still has some some of that baby acne and it's got some jaundice. Well, it might be nice to add just a little soft focus to some of these early shots of baby home from hospital. 
So let's go up to our video filters folder here. Let's click that open and just uh, click on that main folder. And let's go down looking for a filter called soft focus. Here it is here. The way that we apply a filter to any video clip is through the drag and drop method. What you want to do is click on it uh, with your left mouse button. Just point to it and click down with your left mouse button and then drag that over to the video clip that you want to affect. And uh, when you've got it pointing to the video portion, maybe just to help us see what's happening here a little bit, let's open up uh, and make these thumbnails a little bigger. Now, because the last thing we were doing was working with our audio, we had really opened up our audio tracks here so that we could uh, fine tune our audio. Now, uh, what we want to do, because we want to work with our video, let's collapse those. And you can do that just by clicking on these little arrows here. And now we'll be able to open up our video track uh, so that we can see larger thumbnails as we work with our video. And you can do that by just taking your mouse up to the the line that separates video one and video two and you'll see that your mouse turns into a little up and down arrow and when you see that you can click down on your uh, left mouse button and just by scrolling your mouse in the uh, up position just by moving your mouse up uh, you will at the same time open up your video track make it wider and that way we'll be able to see our thumbnails a lot better Okay, and now with this opened up uh, so that we can see what we're doing a little better, we're ready to start working with our video clips. So again, let's go up to our effect palette and uh, find that nice soft focus filter and point to it, click down on it with your left mouse button. And then by moving your mouse on your mouse pad, you can drag and drop that down to the uh, video clip that you want to affect and then let your mouse button go. Don't point the filter to the audio portion of the clip, only point it to the video thumbnail and then let your mouse clip go. Now you'll see that uh, Edius will automatically apply a certain level of filter to the effect. I find that usually the amount of soft focus that they add by default is just a little bit too much and perhaps lightens the clip a little bit too much. But we can change that, um, and that's why we have our information palette open here. You'll notice that when we drag that soft focus down and dropped it on the clip, that uh, the soft focus filter now shows up in the information palette, as long as our focus is on that clip. If we were to point to another clip, we'll notice that that goes away we no longer can access the soft filter. But as long as you are pointing to the clip that you want to work with, you'll see that any effects or filters that you've applied to that video clip will now show up in the information palette. If we were to maybe add some color correction as well, let's say we wanted to uh, you know, affect the contrast or exposure. Let's drop on uh, that color balance uh, filter as well. You'll see that that shows up in our information palette as well. When you drop a color balance filter on, uh, it is neutral. Edius does not apply any of the effects by default like it did the, the soft filter. If we open it up, we'll see that everything is at zero. But with this soft focus, they do add some soft focus to start with by default. And so uh, oftentimes, once you apply a soft focus, you will need to go in and make some adjustments. So to do that again, you just double click on the filter that you want to work with in your information palette. And that brings up a little dialog box where you can make a fine tune adjustments to the filter. So let's say we wanted a little less uh, uh, soft focus, a little less blur. We can scroll down or slide down on the blur. We can affect the, uh, the radius of the, of the filter as well as uh, touch up on the exposure, the brightness. So lots of blur, but we can drop that right back down. Something like that's probably good. And then when you've got something that you like, hit the OK button. And if you wanted to apply 
more soft focus to the next few clips. You don't have to go back and do that same process over and over again. You know, you don't have to go back to the uh, video filters and uh, scroll down looking for that soft focus filter again and drag and drop it one by one and then go in and uh, adjust the levels. If you've got a soft focus filter that you're happy with and you want to apply it to, say, the next three clips, well, just take your mouse and point to an area above those three clips, click down on your left mouse button, and start dragging your mouse down. You'll see a little lasso appear. And as you move your mouse now to the right, you'll see that you are selecting the clips that cover the area of your lasso. So now we can point to our soft focus filter that's inside our information palette and drag and drop that onto any one of these three clips. Doesn't matter which one. You can just drag and drop that to any one of these three clips. And that soft focus filter will now be applied to all three clips. OK, what about uh, slow motion effect? Here we have a nice shot of of the camera moving in on Sleeping Baby. And uh, just to kind of steady out that shot or to make it more of a dreamy effect, we've applied a slow motion effect. And uh, so the question is, how did we do that? Well, uh, any clip that you want to apply a motion effect or a slow motion or a fast motion effect to, just point to that clip and do a right click. And you'll see that a drop-down menu appears. How did we do that? Just a right click on the clip that you want to affect, and you get this big menu popping up. I probably should have called it a pop-up menu rather than a drop-down. You get this nice long menu uh, showing up with lots of options that you can use to affect your clip. And the one we're looking for is time effect and a speed. So choose time effect and then take your mouse over and choose speed. And you'll see that we've already applied a percentage here that is giving us this slow motion effect to our clip. We've chosen 40%. By default, this will be at 100%. And that's what gives us regular camera motion. I mean, it's the regular speed, normal speed. But if we want to make it a fast motion, make it crazy, well, we could apply 400. 400 or any amount that's above you know, 100% will speed that clip up. But what we want to do is the slow motion. And so we're going to choose like 50% and that will cut the speed in half. Or if you want to slow it down even more, say 40%. And now as we look at it, we see that nice slow motion effect. All right, um, next thing I want to show you is the Layouter tool. There's lots of things that you can do with the Layouter tool to resize your shots. Well, that's just one thing you can do with the Layouter tool. We'll have a whole tutorial on all of the different things that you can do with the Layouter tool. Sometimes there, there might be footage that you want to bring in that has been shot at a different aspect ratio than um, the majority of your footage. Like most of my footage was shot in 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but some of these uh, GoPro cameras and other cameras that you might be shooting with uh, might not have been set. Uh, the settings might have been something other than the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And so if you want to conform that uh, to make it look and fit better with the rest of your video, you can do that with the Layouter tool. And uh, you can just right click on the clip again. And this time, the option that we want to choose is Layouter. You'll notice that you can also enter that uh, with the F7 key. And you'll get this uh, dialog box that pops open. And what you can do is just grab any one of these corners and stretch that out until it fills the, the screen, or at least it, it comes these edges come right to the, the edge of the frame there. And then let your mouse go, and you'll see that it fills out the screen. Then you can just hit OK. 
Do the same for the next one. Layouter, and just stretch that out. And that'll help you uh, kind of make the video uh, work and fit better with the rest of your videos. Okay, uh, what else do we want to show you? Color correction. We don't want to get into too much detail here. Uh, the color correction tools of EDIUS really deserve a whole tutorial in and of themselves. But we're just going to give you a quick glance here of how you can... Um, Manipulate the color a little bit uh, to um, to help some problem shots. Some of these camcorders that have the auto white balance, when you start first start working with them, they might give you a kind of an odd color until um, it's been running for a few seconds, and then it might adjust to the color temperature of your environment, and then it's fine. But if you want to use a clip that is from when you just opened the camcorder, you might have to work with this difficult color balance. You'll notice that it's quite green. So uh, let's go up to our effect palette and uh, go into our color correction tools here. And the one that we want to drop on is the three-way color correction. Just drop that onto your clip and you'll notice that it pops up here in our information palette. Let's double click on that to open up the tool. And by default, the way this opens up, it's a little difficult to adjust uh, because the, uh, the adjustment tools are just uh, too small, but you can open that up so that they become bigger. Drag that corner pin down and then uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to work with. Grab it and drop it down so that it's a little bit below the clip because we want to watch our clip as we make an adjustment here. And like I say, we're going to spend a whole tutorial working with uh, this three-way color correction tool as well as some of the other color correction tools of EDIUS. But uh, just for this quick little demo, know that it's the gray balance where you can affect most of your change. And so point to the little center pin here in the gray balance area and move it around to see if you can't get rid of some of that green. Right now it's just showing a little bit too much green, but if you move it, uh, just point it and, and move it with your mouse down into the blue area a little bit, you'll get rid of that green and it will look a little bit more normal. And when you got something you like, just let your mouse go and then go down and be sure to hit OK. Now, it could be that the skin here uh, is just also a little overexposed. Let's maybe touch that up a little bit. Let's use a different color correction tool this time. Let's drop on the color balance to that clip. And we notice that it also pops up in our information palette. Double click on that. And uh, let's just bring down the brightness a little bit so that that skin isn't showing up so overexposed. Okay, what about working with audio? Let's maybe uh, open up our uh, audio tracks again. And uh, we probably have these stretched out too much. Uh, let's make that a little smaller and open up our music track. If we want to see more of our audio track, remember you can choose to show more of your audio by um, adjusting this double bar here with your mouse. Okay, so working with our audio, how can we uh, adjust the volume of our music track so that it is uh, giving us good levels? First thing let's do, let's open up our audio display, our audio mixer display here, and watch what levels we're getting as we play this. Well, we see that it is really peaking quite high there and even getting into the danger zone. If you uh, see that the you're getting into the amber there, even the yellow is just a little bit dangerous. And uh, so we want to maybe bring that audio down a little bit. And the way that you do that is point to this little amber line here and hold down your Alt key. It's important that you hold your Alt key down before you point and click to it with your left mouse button. Without the Alt key, 
held down. When you point and click to this amber line, you're going to create what is called a node. And if you try and lower your volume by dragging that down, all you're going to drag down is that node that you created. Let's undo that. And this time, hold your Alt key down before you point and click to it. And then, as you click to it, you are not creating a, a node. And then, with your mouse, your left mouse button held down, start dragging in a downward motion, and we can reduce the level of audio uh, for that uh, music track. Let's try that again. Take a look. And that's probably a lot better. For uh, digital audio, you really want to do your best to be peaking at 12, or at least not going too much over the minus 12 dB. And so if you see any of your music or audio, uh, am ambient audio uh, going up into the uh, amber or the, or, or the red, even if it sounds okay on your laptop, when you start uh, exporting this material to various mediums, there's a chance it's going to cause clipping and even distortion. So you want to avoid having your audio going up into the... Uh, it's okay for it to hit the yellow every once in a while. That's You can live with that. It should be fine. But if you see it starting to get up into the the reds and the ambers there you know that even though it sounds good it sounds fine here on your laptop it's you're going to end up having problems in export especially if you're headed to broadcast so uh, try and um, normalize or, or bring down your audio levels so that it is really only hitting the yellow Okay, but then we have all of this ambient audio that comes with our clips. What are we going to do with that? These cameras, these consumer cameras that uh, are out there are often uh, set at the factory to have this horrible uh, loud audio. And if you haven't gone in and adjusted your mic settings on your camera, there's a good chance that the audio that you have captured when you recorded your family videos is just way too loud. And we need to bring that audio down. But we don't want to take the time to go in and individually bring all of this audio down for every clip. That would just take too long. There must be a better way, and indeed there is. What I've already done here is adjust the whole audio track, the, this first audio track here that has all of this ambient audio. I've used our mixer tool here to adjust the audio to bring it down for the whole track all in one sweep. And the way that you do that is you know, first of all, determine what track it's on, and we see that it's on track A. And so in your audio mixer, it's going to be uh, the corresponding audio is going to show up here under 1A. If you've renamed it over here to be something else, like say we renamed it to ambient audio, well, that is going to be reflected also now over in our audio mixer, ambient and uh, so now, if we want to affect the volume level for the whole track, then what we need to do is, first of all, go down to the very bottom and click on this little down arrow where it says off and select track. And then with that on, what we want to do is bring the slider bar down to about to 12, minus 12 dB gain. And that will adjust the audio for the whole track. We don't have to go in and individually um, adjust each audio clip. Now, there may be some clips where you do want to hear the ambient audio a little bit louder, uh, like in this little section here. <laughs> where we wanted to hear what was happening a little bit better, I might have gone in and 
individually selected that clip and brought the uh, audio levels up a little bit so that we can hear the ambient audio come out a little bit more clearly for any specific clip. That's a lot easier to do than, than going in and dragging every clip down, is to first of all just drag them all down and then bring the individual clips that you want to back up. Okay, well I believe that that does it for this tutorial on editing your family home videos. In our last tutorial in this little mini-series, we're going to show you how to make a quick title using the Quick Titler tool of Edius, and then how to export your video so that you can upload it to the internet. But for now, I believe that that does it for this episode on quick and easy edits for family home videos.